Hey everyone and welcome to Comic Breakdown. If you're new to the page, be sure to give us a like and a sub. And today we're going to be getting into Superman Action Comics number 41 through 44. And we're going to be covering these ones specifically because it's a story arc called Truth. And not only that, it's Superman taking on police brutality. And with the current climate that America is going through right now, I think it's a super important story to tell and just showing how superheroes have always taken on social justice issues. So this is going to be the full story arc of truth, like I said before. So without further ado, let's dive in. So diving into the first issue, we're met with a Superman who's badly beaten and bruised. He, he, he's missing his shirt, his cape's been ripped to tarnations, his hair has been cut. And for those wondering, you know, exactly why Superman's in this condition, it's covered in Superman number 42 that came out in June of 2015, a month after this issue came out. And what happened is Superman was forced to use his solar flare, so much so to the point where it drained him of much of his energy and power, and now he's pretty much a fragment of what Superman is capable of. You know, he's feeling pain again, he's, he's feeling all these different things that come with being human and not only on top of that his identity was revealed because it was either he sends off the solar flare and drains his power or they would reveal who he was and in a turn of events Lois Lane ended up revealing who he was anyway that way to take away take away the power from these shadow demons that were attacking them and so it's been weeks since that event happened and he's just been struggling and struggling and we really see it come to fruition that a, a group of people realize who he is when he buys a motorcycle and originally they wanted eight hundred dollars for the bike but finding out who he was they they wanted more they tried to push for more money and now that superman isn't as strong as he used to be people are going to try to take advantage of that and so these gentlemen they they try to jump him but at the end of the day he is still superman and with one punch just knocks all four of these guys and then hops on the bike and takes off and he travels all around the country he, you know he just not happen to be superman right now he, he doesn't have the power to be superman he couldn't really save many people he feels even if he wanted to so he's really just sightseeing america just exploring going on seeing what's happening and then the, that's when he gets a call from jimmy jimmy also and so he decides to head back into town into metropolis and he he finds that there's police quarantines around the city and then the police recognize him and they immediately draw guns on him calling him clark kent and superman demanding that he get on the ground so he can be taken into custody and this is where we see superman turn that motorcycle around and hightail it out of there and this is when he runs into jimmy olsen and jimmy brings him to a area in metropolis that they've dubbed kentville and it's essentially people that are standing with Superman, people that are on his side, that, that believe in Superman, that he's not some crazed monster that needs to be held accountable and needs all these ridiculous lawsuits because he fought Doomsday and things of that nature. And that he's not just some alien, but he's been living here the whole time on this block. And all these people are super appreciative. Once they found out that it's him, they were like, yes, like Clark Kent is here for us. And you really see the community come together. Everybody's singing, drinking, having fun, you know, dancing food trucks are everywhere and then lee lambrant a fire department employee gets a call and clark can't help himself he grabs the scanner and takes off to go help and and we get a little bit of uh seeing what he's still capable of he's not able to technically fly but he can definitely leap from building to building without an issue and then this is when we see one of the shadow creatures that he'd they've been tracking him for weeks now and the ones that had attacked him when we he was down in the arctic and he may not be up to par of what he was, but he still has remnants of his cape. And if you guys remember, his cape is like super strong and super durable. And so he wraps them around his fists and he goes to take this thing on. And he delivers a mighty punch to the Shadow Demon's face. And this is where we see back at Kentville, police officers and Sergeant Bennington, or Bennington and what they're doing is marching towards Kentville. They're marching to stop the, the, the gathering, to, to take it all down. They're all in riot gear, and you just see rows and rows of police officers. And that brings us into Superman Action Comics Justice, number 42. And we pick back up in Metropolis, uh, in the little subdivision of Kentville, of what they're calling it. And the police march on them and tell them that they have five minutes to disperse because they're un unlawfully assembling. And the people are scared. You know, they're worried about, you know, how this is all going to play out. 
And then across town we see Superman still battling with this shadow monster. You know, we're really seeing Superman get thrown around. Without all of his abilities, he, he's just not the champion that he once was. Not to say that his powers aren't still a great feat in themselves because he's still taking this thing on. And he ends up driving a steel beam through essentially its eye or its head. And he grabbed a giant chain, wraps it around this steel beam, and drives it further into the monster, essentially putting it down. And with this we see a giant explosion and we see Clark almost incinerated. Because you have to remember he's no longer invincible so he can't be just taking blast to the chest anymore and then we cut back over to clintonville across town and the, the police have decided they're going to start administering tear gas into the crowds and so they start shooting tear gas at the people and one man dante comes out with a bat and knocks the tear gas back at them pretty much making a stand saying like we're not going to take this we're not going to deal with this in our community this is our block we're not doing anything illegal go away so the head officer in charge takes that as a sign of aggression essentially saying that's resisting arrest assaulting a police officer and unlawful deployment of chemical weapons and this gives in his eyes gives him justification to go in on the crowd and lee tries to calm everybody down tells everybody to sit down and dante's just not having it he's like you know i'm not a dog i'm not i'm not gonna be subdued and the situation is just escalating at, a, at an enormous pace and right before things are getting physical, we see the giant chain that Superman is carrying go across essentially the dividing line between the police and the civilians. And Superman tells everybody, he's like, alright, listen up. He's like, I I I'm calling in all my chips. Like, I I'm, I'm playing the Superman card, if you will. And he starts talking to everybody, like, you know, you I've saved from Brainiac, you know, you're a police officer that I've saved before as well. You know, Dante, you're somebody that I've saved as well before too. You know, why, why are we doing this? Why can we not find some kind of middle ground here? And Superman, he, he really is in such a weakened state. He even admits it to himself that he's such in a, such a weak state. He can barely lift these chains up and he knows that he can't fight for them, but he knows that he can stand for them. And he wraps the train chain around his body and creates a barrier between the police and the people. And Biginton is essentially telling him like he's tired of superheroes, tired of hearing words like Brainiac and Zod and Doomsday, and that anytime he is around, anytime people like him are around, this is what happens. We get huge catastrophes that are city destroying. And this is when we see the Metro SWAT come out, and they have insanely high-tech weaponry for the Metro PD. And Superman pleads, he's like, you know, I'm not here to fight and I'm not going to fight back. And they want him to. They want him to fight back to give them an excuse to be able to take down Superman. See, look, Superman attacked us. Superman was a violent one. And these guys beat the crap out of Superman. And then the head officer in charge changes things up. And while this is all taking place, he starts shooting tear gas into the crowds at the people. And the SWAT team starts attacking the people. And this is when Superman, he just... He snaps, he breaks, and he goes after the officer in charge. The one that's initiating all of this chaos for no reason. And he punches him right in the face. And that will bring us into Action Comics number 43. And we see Superman punching the officer just dead in the face. And thinking to himself like he, he can only imagine what Jimmy's thinking of him right now jimmy olsen like of all the people to lose their temper and and lose their bearing it's superman he just punched a cop in the face out of anger and he flies a good 10 20 feet back and there's almost horror in people's face like oh my god clark what did you just do and then the man stands up and turns and faces the crowd and he is one of the shadow monsters and almost almost instantaneously superman feels relief and shame roll over him all at the same time and the goal of the shadow monster was to force clark to lose to lose it and he doesn't understand why he doesn't understand why this thing was trying to provoke him to the point of making him break like this and this is where we see him attack the other officers and superman not having his super speed is, is unable to stop the attack from happening and it's almost like he's absorbing the tech power out of the SWAT team member's suit. And it, and it starts attacking everybody. It starts attacking his friends and, and people he knows and, and cares about. And it wants him to lose it. And, and Superman, he doesn't have much of a choice. He gives into it. And he starts fighting back. 
and in all the chaos, Lee is struck in the shoulder. And as Clark battles with this thing, the SWAT team members are, are telling him to back off, like get off of him. And Clark, unsure why they're, they're siding with him, one of the officers tackles him, and then the whole SWAT team just starts opening fire on this shadow monster. And then that's when we see it take off into a dark alley. Back in the mayor's office, she's she's viewing all this happening on a tablet. Jimmy Olsen is uploading everything because he's pho photographing everything that's currently happening. And he's, he's uploading it immediately to the internet. And so she's being able to see it along with 23 million other people. And the mayor calls superman and, and essentially tells him like he needs to he should leave the city because anything that's happening it, it's following him and they're not wrong you know this is what the superman feels at least is it they could be right because everything bad that happens seems to happen when superman is around and so as things start to calm down lee superman and jimmy head up to his apartment and the police had searched his apartment after his identity was revealed but somebody had broke in since then and they broke in and wrote go home alien and destroyed superman's apartment just showing the kind of, of bigotry and anti-alien movements that he has to deal with now that his identity has been revealed to the public and yet superman still goes out to the people in the neighborhood and he still talks to them and tells them like he needs everybody to 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 take care of one another because he's not strong enough to protect everybody and things are probably going to get worse they're probably going to come back for him and he can't have anybody getting hurt so everybody needs to be their own superman essentially and this is when we see the people really stand up with him and, and they start to make plans they start to figure out how they're gonna take care of one another and how they're gonna come together as a community and it's a really moving moment and then back at city hall we see some police officers gabbing back and forth about how you know one of them doesn't really like superman at all like the least favorite person in the whole city is superman but all the officers are getting interviewed essentially about this whole shadow monster deal since one of their own hat was essentially one of them and so she steps into the office and she's met with the mayor and some of the associates and the mayor is essentially saying you know i know you have distaste for superman and that you believed the sergeant was a good leader regardless of, of the rumors that are being said and this is exactly what the the mayor wants to hear and wants to know and the officer agrees like this is this is what i think and then moments later she comes pouring out of the room blasting her gun because the shadow monsters essentially revealed themselves and she wasn't about doing that she wasn't about trying to side with them and before the shadow monsters are able to kill her this is where we see superman and a bunch of the other officers getting ready to take these things on and that will bring us to superman action comics number 44 lies and we pick up on the streets of metropolis outside the police station and everybody is battling these things they're coming out of everywhere and the police and superman are trying to hold these things off and the leader exposes herself and it was the mayor the entire time and she reveals herself the, as the name of wrath and that she's essentially looking for fear like she wants to instill fear into people and she wants she wants wrath she wants to find the wrath and who better to find it in than superman the one that is the purest of us all the one that that doesn't succumb to his emotions and his anger but he is the one who is the one we all look up to as the role model the example and the whole time she's been pushing all of these buttons doing all of this so she could absorb his wrath and with all his wrath with every punch she just seems to get stronger and stronger now back in Clintville, everybody's packing things up, getting getting people to hospital, and this is when we see the shadow monsters in the form of people start attacking the crowd. And this is where we see Lee jump into action, start trying to, to defend everybody around her. And cutting back to Superman and Wrath, we see essentially Superman failing to be able to do anything because the more he attacks, the more he gets angry, the more she's just getting stronger. She literally feeds on this, and so he can't figure out what he's supposed to do. And while this is happening, everybody comes to arms for Superman to work together to get this taken care of as a team. And so he succumbs to his anger and he just tries to thrash her because he feels like his anger is justified. It, that this anger is righteous. And then we cut over to Lee and she's succumbed to her cut that she got by one of the shadow monsters and we see a break out of her arm. Cutting back to Superman and Wraith, they're going at it. And S Superman stops in his tracks and he hears... The screams and the essentially building catching fire and the whole neighborhood's going straight down the drain and this is where we see the whole building explode 
and Lee runs over to the wall and breaks the wall straight open. And then Superman comes crashing in. And at first he thinks, like, Lee's infected. I got, I'm gonna have to take her down. This is not something I want to do. And goes to stop her from any more destruction, but realizes that she was actually saving people. She was getting people out of the building, giving them an exit. And somehow she has full control over this shadow monster inside of her. All the shadow monsters have disappeared, but she, she somehow has power over them. And, and Clark's not sure at first, but she's like, trust me, Clark, I'm good. And then we see the community coming together, you know, flipping cars back over, helping each other back up, picking up all the destruction. And Clark realizes, like, you know, no matter how much he wants to stay and help, like, these guys got it. And people are already starting to turn their backs on him already, like, as soon as this event's already starting to end. So, you know, regardless of how much he wants to stay, he knows he needs to go. He needs to go find Wrath and, and hunt her down and and end this once and for all so they're not going to come back and ruin his town and that brings us to the mayor and she seems to be in some kind of seedy motel downtown and she goes into a room where all the other shadow monsters are essentially waiting they've been waiting thousands of years and they finally their goal is to get superman on the edge to get him to the point of the, his breaking point that way they can have their chance they can make their rise we can show their you know our true faces to the world and that will be where this story arc ends so let me know what you guys think in the comments you know it definitely covers police brutality definitely in a different aspect than than a lot of readers were probably expecting but i loved it i enjoyed it it was a lot of fun if you guys want me to continue this storyline just leave a comment down in the section and i will be sure to continue this on for you guys and if you guys haven't be sure to like and subscribe to the page and until the next video